Today's movie is full of terrible tick puns, and I'm feeling totally unapologetic about it. I'm in Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Tony Randall's woodsy horror flick, Ticks. Released in 1993, Ticks found a cult audience thanks to Late Night Cable and your local video store. A silly little monster flick with a cast full of familiar names, some gooey effects, and an entertaining script, it's not all that surprising that so many of us look back on Ticks with fond memories. The new Blu-ray version of the film for Vinegar Syndrome looks great and features plenty of extras. If you want to pick up a copy, you'll find a link below. I highly recommend it. But enough about that. Can this throwback to the classic creature features of old earn the coveted 5 barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by patrons Seth the Welsh, Gary Flanders, and James Colin Vaughn. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment and description below. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on this title card. And if you didn't already know Tix was made in the 90s, this ugly green title would totally clue you in. Then we jump to this barn. I know everyone thinks writing wind puns is a breeze, but all of mine blue. Hey, it's Amy Dolans, daughter of Monkey's band member Mickey Dolans. And Seth Green? Well, I guess if the title color didn't scream 1990s, this casting sure does. And look, it's Virginia Keen. She clearly got a deal on extra letters, and by God, she's gonna use them all. I can't really gauge if I like this movie or not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Alfonso Ribeiro? Carlton Banks is in this movie? <laughs> I hope this is part of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air cinematic universe. Peter Scolari, too. Man, this is quite the cast. Also, rest in peace, Mr. Scolari. Goddamn, Clint and Rance Howard? Was Ron too busy to appear in this movie? Was there a buy one, get one on Lesser Howards down at the talent agency? And eventually we find this green goo. This is basically how they made Surge. And we close out the credits with Tony Randall, who also directed Hellbound Hellraiser 2. Then we jump over here where Dad is explaining the birds and the bees to Wiley. Well, you see, son, when a mommy and daddy love each other very much. Also, Seth Green has an astonishing 200 acting credits on his IMDb page, so I'm not going to be able to make a joke related to every character he's ever played. Sorry, I'm only human. But hey, you got airborne before you got Buffy or Idle Hands. That's three if you're keeping score at home. Anyway, now get out and go become a man. I'm paying this escort by the hour. Go on, do the deed. Beep beep, Richie. At any rate, either Oz is about to turn into a werewolf or he's got a wicked case of IBS happening. Luckily for him, budget MC Hammer is here. I gotta say, I had no idea Tix was going to have an homage to White Men Can't Jump in it. Here's the deal. You sing a gimme, you live. You brick, you don't. Oh no, please Hammer, don't hurt him. Has there ever been anything in human history less believable than Carlton Banks delivering this line? See, they call me Panic because I never do. I mean, this is definitely not too legit, MC Mallet. I will say this, Seth Green's cutaway is automatic at free throws. This half-assed game of horse is interrupted when this van shows up to deliver some exposition. Adults, don't believe a word they say. You're gonna hate this trip more than I will. Shut up, Meg. Oh, it's Peter Scolari. Is it wrong that I wish he was in drag for this movie? And if you guessed MC Gavel was coming along to summer camp too, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. I'm sure glad you could join us. Figured it'd be good for a few laughs. And then we meet some new characters. Here's budget Lou Diamond Phillips. Do I look Mexican to you? Yeah. And his girlfriend, Muffy. Odds on these two survive until the third act? As Brett Easton Ellis once wrote, less than zero. And the adults are like, okay, let's get these kids off to Looney Camp at Crystal Lake. Vic needs help chopping wood. From there, we jump to a live look at Clint Howard. Uh, top notch. This isn't part of the movie, this is just how he lives between gigs. No, sorry, Clint, this is Tix. You weren't in Bruno Mattei's Rats. And I see now we've segued into Night of the Demon. Watch out for Sasquatch. I'm also wondering if we're ever going to see a tick in this movie. Way to build up the anticipation, Tony Randall. At this point, this really feels like an industrial film touting the value of America's national parks. Yellowstone is full of magnificent vistas and the natural beauty of America. Oh, and it's a great place to hide a body. And just like the opening scenes of ticks, this tire is flat. I'm glad we stopped, though. We finally get our first tick. Oh, it's a tick. Vampires of the insect world. They eventually get back on the road and stop by the convenience store from Cabin Fever. 
I hope that Kung Fu Pancakes kid is here. Pancakes! While everyone heads inside, we're treated to a very special episode of Silver Spoons where Alfonso learns about steroids. Remember kids, eat Clint, Trent hard, and Avar give up. Um, why does Clint Howard look like a disheveled version of Prodigy's Keith Flint? I just know they're gonna play Firestarter on the top five at nine. I'm a Firestarter, twisted Firestarter. And then something kills his rat. You could say this is a real rat catastrophe. Then he walks right into this jump scare. <laughs> it's a trap! As bad as that is, things are about to get worse. Clint's about to get the mother of all tea bags. Then we jump over here. This scene looks kind of tired. At any rate, it looks like they've arrived at Camp Forest Green. This place looks worse than the projects. I guess it's a good thing we're at therapy camp because these kids have a lot of baggage. Everyone gets settled in and Scott Evil here finds this egg. Unfortunately, he was just looking for the script for Can't Hardly Wait. And were they just saving their boogers or what? Bet that's dinner. Not anymore. Then we take a long pan to the world's smallest glory hole. Back in the main room, Peter Scolari's like, I worked with Tom Hanks. I deserve better than this. Then he stops to clearly announce the film's thesis statement. In the end, I fear this group will not successfully bond, despite their common antagonist. Out in the woods, Dr. Charles Seaver spots a tumor growing out of Melissa's back. I'm not sure this is medically accurate. I'm also not sure most of you saw Dear Dictator, but Seth was in it. Anyway, he got some slime on her back. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, not like that, you pervs. From the tick egg. They report this back at camp, but no one believes them. Oh, come on, guys. Bugs don't attack unless they're aggravated. Um, are you sure? Can I see your degree in entomology? I don't think she studied under Donald Pleasance in Phenomena. Great, classic story, the adults not believing the kids. Thanks. Hey, hey, I'll point out the tropes, Seth. I think you guys are overreacting. And I yeah. suggest you observe from a distance. You'd be surprised how much you can learn. This riveting tale is interrupted when a few extras from Deliverance show up and it turns into reefer madness. <laughs> Mary Wanna. Back in our other movie, Clint Howard is still alive. But he's basically a human pinata full of ticks. In fact, you could say he's pretty ticked off by this turn of events. Jesus Christ! Oh, that night, everyone gathers under the brightest moon in history. I don't want to alarm anyone, but they've either thrown gas on this fire or opened a portal to hell. Then things get awkward. Right, right now, I'm just a little busy inside. Busy? Busy what? Screwing Holly? God, they'll kick me out of the Susan B. Anthony Hotel if they find out I'm sleeping with a woman. Do you kids even remember Bosom Buddies? Christ, I'm old. Seth Green, meanwhile, is out here wondering why Greg the Bunny got cancelled. This is interrupted by Carlton. Oh man, I loved you on different strokes. Um, I was on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And don't look now, but I think Fido here is getting tickled. He's definitely spastic. Tonight, on a very special episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Carlton loses his best friend. Turns out he feels the same way about ticks as I do so far. Look, I'm out of here, man. I've had enough of this bonanza bullshit. Also, I feel like we need to talk about the fact that Seth Green spends half this movie looking like the love child of two members of Wilson Phillips. No, don't go, Carlton. Things are going away, you hold on for one more day. It is sort of wild to me that it looks like the Green Giant just loogied all over this forest. Little known fact, Yosemite is crawling with character actors. Seth heads back to his cabin, and this scene was apparently filmed with a surveillance camera. I guess it's good they swapped the fisheye lens at least. Then Budget Willow shows up to tell him about that one time at juvenile delinquent camp. And then Dad shows up too. I'm gonna go look for Panic. You wanna join me? In the woods. I'd suggest starting your search for Panic at the disco. It's just a hunch. Then we drive out for some exposition. My dad and I went camping when I was about eight. He got drunk and took off. So I was lost in the woods for a couple of days. Peter Scolari's like, boring. Eventually, they arrive at the vet's office. Gentlemen, it is my expert medical opinion that this dog is dead. But I'm gonna shoot him up with some of Lou Diamond Phillips' Winstrol just to be sure. <laughs> the cause of death is a real mystery. Something drained your dog of all his blood. What could have caused that? I'm just spitballing, but it probably means you have vampires. Alfonso did kind of look like Blade. Oh wait, here's the problem. Your dog has a xenomorph infection. You're lucky we caught it in time. It's a real mess when they do the whole chest burst thing. And this is definitely not the first time Seth Green's put a rolled up towel under the door. Man, I knew shooting this thing up with vitamin S was gonna end badly. Now it's ready to start a fight, steal your girlfriend, and bench press your car. And then it gets squashed. When in doubt, squish. 
There's been a real uptick in parasite deaths at this clinic today. Scolari then offers this observation. Ticks do not get this big. Well, they do when they're aroused, but that's a different movie. Out in the woods, Carlton's ready to pound one out. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. I mean, he's got a tick in his pants and he's beating it. Wait, that still sounds dirty. At any rate, this thing seems pretty enthusiastic about drinking Carlton's blood. Guess he won't be doing the Carlton or the Chinese typewriter anytime soon. Back at camp, we get another tire shot. I don't know, I feel like this is Chekhov's tire now. Better be important in the third act. The girls head out for some fishing, but all they caught is this dead cop. If they shot this in California, they could be having fish and chips for dinner tonight. Over in another movie, Amy Dolan's is somehow still alive, but probably not for long because she's found Clint Howard's secret stash. Unfortunately, it's also full of tick eggs. One thing's for sure, these ticks are gonna have the munchies. Then she walks right into a jump scare. <laughs> things are starting to get pretty chaotic. And he explodes, and Amy winds up with the mother of all hickeys. Carlton, meanwhile, is getting stomped by the rednecks who give him a taste of their pimp hand. He eventually makes a break for it and winds up beating this dude like he's a government mule. Come on! Come on! Then, Budget Gary Busey shows up and shoots him in the gut. The good news is, he's gonna die happy as all this herb goes up in smoke. Oh hey, remember Seth Green and Peter Scolari? Yeah, they're still in this movie. They rescue Amy Dolan's and discount Lou Diamond Phillips. Of course, the woods being on fire means the ticks are heading for the cabin. I bet they could just hide out in the attic. Everyone reconvenes at the cabin, but they need to get a move on because the clock is ticking. Before they can leave, they find another jump scare. Jesus H. Christ! <laughs> you could say this guy has some odd facial tics. Alfonso is limping along, much like the plot. But he does finally show up, so I guess we can finally get this party started. Has anyone actually died in this movie other than maybe Clint Howard? Anyway, Carlton's basically doing the Humpty Dance. Rest in peace, Shock G. They light the tick on fire, and it explodes. You could say that was pretty bombastic. Turns out this doesn't matter because he dies anyway. <laughs> That death scene was really pretty melodramatic. Well, we best be moving on, unless we want those bugs to get the rest of us. Bugs don't use guns. And wait, is this movie gonna suddenly turn into Last House on the left? I mean, I'd be okay with that. Peter Scolari leaps into action and gets shot in the leg for his troubles. Right in the hammy. He'll never deadlift again. Press F to pay respects. And they take Seth Green hostage. When is Oz gonna turn into a werewolf and kill these jerks? I feel like this movie has a whole lot of plot and characters that A, aren't ticks, or B, aren't being eaten by ticks for a movie called Ticks. This is presumably because Ticks was originally written in the 1970s and constantly refreshed over the years before getting made in the early 90s. In fact, the production actually went back for reshoots involving Clint Howard and some of the other sequences to liven things up. Budget Gary Busey sends his henchman out to get the van, but he gets a-ticked by this thing. He's definitely not gonna have a good Lyme disease. Then he starts hallucinating. No. You're dead. Murder! And he drives into the house. Oh yeah. I tell you, his driving really sucks, but that would just me being unfairly critical. The home reno is the least of their worries because there are ticks in the house now. Clearly this dude has never played Halo because this is like trying to shoot the Flood. Man, they really are like the Flood because they're reanimating Carlton. And he's morphing like a Resident Evil boss. I don't remember the Tick TV series being so gory. Spoon! And look, it's Chekhov's tire. But they're gonna need to tick up the pace here because this thing is in the other room. And the way it's mountain budget Gary Busey here, it's clearly feeling a little romantic. Seth Green Tarzans out to the van, but is surrounded by ticks. This feels pretty climactic. Inside, they're about to make their escape, but the giant tick is doing his best Jack Nicholson in the Shining impression. Things are going great until the tick snags great value Lou Diamond Phillips. He won't be La bomba anytime soon. God help me! But Seth shows up to save him, and then we get this really weird series of edits. Hold on tight! How 
did he get in the driver's seat that fast exactly? Are there two Seth Greens in this movie? Does he have a twin? Has he figured out how to break the space-time continuum? But that's not the only nonsensical thing, because then the giant tick just sort of randomly explodes. Not gonna lie, that feels anti-climactic. And damn, if you had Amy Dolans and her boyfriend dying in the tick's death pool, pay up. They somehow lived. Let's hope they don't run over the Goonies while they're up here. So, the only main character who died was the black guy? <laughs> Go figure. And then, for some reason, we jumped to this junkyard. I think this is where they buried Freddy Krueger's bones. Oh wait, it's just so we can get the twist ending. This is pretty ridiculous. Tix was a video store and late night cable staple in the 1990s. And all things considered, it's actually pretty good. The cast is better than you'd expect, Tony Randall is a good director, and the FX work from KNB FX is impressive given the budget. The script feels mostly stitched together, but Tix finally delivers on the promise of its premise in the final act. Will that be enough to earn this one five barf bags? Let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, Tix delivers. I had to cut some of the most impressive gore sequence to appease Prude to, but trust me, there's some solid splatter here. We're treated to multiple exploding ticks, Carlton getting ripped to shreds, gross tick eggs, and Clint Howard going to pieces. The splatter here is well executed and plentiful enough to earn ticks a four barf bag rating. This is definitely a sick flick. Looking for another creature feature where people die horribly? Then be sure to check out my review of Slugs. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.